Welcome back, my name is Christina, nurse practitioner. So what is a heart murmur? A heart murmur is a sound of turbulent blood flow within the valves and vessels of the heart. Within your heart, you have four heart valves. You want to know anatomically where to place your stethoscope to identify the location of the murmur. This includes your aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral valves. Your aortic valve is within your second intercostal space. Your pulmonic valve is within your second intercostal space, and your tricuspid valve is your fourth or fifth intercostal space, and your mitral valve, also referred to as apex, is the fifth intercostal space. So you have two differentials, stenotic versus regurgitant valves. The stenotic valves are the ones that do not open. They are like narrowed and typically this will be your patient with increased risk of arrhythmias versus regurgitant valves that do not close properly. This reminds me of my grandma. She always says she has a leaky valve. She's referring to regurgitation. Now you have a patient and you think they may have have a heart murmur. Here are my three steps I do every time. One, where in the cardiac cycle is a heart murmur? Is it systolic or diastolic? Number two, where do you hear it the loudest? Is it aortic, mitral, pulmonic, or tricuspid? Number three, are there any clinical symptoms such as palpitations, shortness of breath, chest pain? I also want to emphasize that murmurs are known with the company they keep, which we will discuss in further. So your systolic murmurs include four types. I use acronyms to help me remember specifics. For example, my systolic murmurs, I use the acronym Mr. MVP as a physiologic murmur. Your MISTER is mitral regurgitation. Your MVP is your mitral valve prolapse. And AS stands for aortic stenosis. And the initials for PM is a physiologic murmur. Your diastolic murmur, I use the acronym ARMS. The AR is for aortic regurgitation. The MS is for a mitral stenosis. So let's listen to aortic stenosis. Ask yourself the following, is it systolic or diastolic? It's systolic and it's loudest where? Aortic, it's described as a crescendo, decrescendo, systolic ejection murmur. What are some clinical symptoms? It can cause angina, congestive heart failure, and syncope. A little inside information, aortic stenosis is usually congenital and can be secondary caused from rheumatic fever as well. On physical exam, you will hear the heart murmur along the right sternal border in the second intercostal space and peripheral pulses are typically weak and a chest x-ray may have cardiomegaly. Nursing tip, if you ever find any new murmur, notify the healthcare provider as a patient needs to be referred out to cardiology for further evaluation. Moving on to aortic regurgitation. So let's take a listen. Now ask yourself the following. Number one, is it systolic or diastolic? It's diastolic. It's described as a early diastolic decrescendo murmur. And number two, where do you hear it the loudest? Aortic, which is heard best at the third and fourth intercostal space. And number three, what are the clinical symptoms? It can cause chest pain, angina, dizziness, and sometimes heart failure. Findings on your EKG may detect left ventricular hypertrophy. On physical exam, you may have a wide pulse pressure. 
The etiology may be associated from congenital deformity, rheumatic heart disease, or syphilis, to mention a few. So let's listen to mitral stenosis. Ask yourself the following. Number one, is it systolic or diastolic? It's diastolic. The sound sounds like a low pitch decrescendo rumbling diastolic murmur. And number two, where do you hear it the loudest? It would be loudest in the mitral area, which is in the apex of the fifth intercostal space. And number three, what are the clinical symptoms? It can cause AFib, dyspnea, hemoptysis as well. The etiology is mostly from rheumatic fever and can be graded with through the following stages. Stage one is your asymptomatic phase. Gradually, it'll pass as a year's development. Sometimes you could develop exercise intolerance. Stage two would be pulmonary congestion. Stage three, you would develop pulmonary hypertension. And stage four, you would have severely decreased cardiac output. On x-ray, you may have an enlarged left atrium and your EKG will show AFib. So now let's listen to mitral regurgitation. Ask yourself the following. Number one, is it systolic or diastolic? It's systolic. And number two, it's loudest where? The mitral area. You kind of hear this hollow systolic murmur. And number three, what are clinical symptoms? It can cause heart failure, fatigue, and dyspnea. Etiology can be from endocarditis, congenital heart disease, or rheumatic heart disease as well. Moving on to your MVP, which is your mitral valve prolapse. Let's take a listen. Ask yourself the following. Number one, is it systolic or is it diastolic? It's systolic. And two, where do you hear it the loudest? It's a mitral. And sometimes you'll hear a systolic click and you hear it best when the patient is laying on the side. Some clinical symptoms. would be palpitations and sometimes chest pain. The etiology is typically for your childbearing age, which are women between 14 and 30 years of age. So this type of heart murmur, it's typically monitored annually for change and you want to make sure that they see the cardiologist. And now it's time to quiz you on heart murmur sounds. First heart sound, what is it? Is it A, aortic regurgitation, B, aortic stenosis, C, mitral regurgitation, or D, mitral stenosis, or E, mitral valve prolapse? It is D, mitral stenosis. Second heart murmur sound, what is it? Is it A, aortic regurgitation, B, aortic stenosis, C, mitral regurgitation, or D, mitral stenosis, or E, mitral valve prolapse? The answer is A, aortic regurgitation. Third heart murmur sound, what is it? Is it A, aortic regurgitation, B, aortic stenosis, C, mitral regurgitation, or D, mitral stenosis, or E, mitral valve prolapse? It is B, aortic stenosis. 
Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.